Hello there everyone, it's UXW Bill here again, and I am up to something. I am getting into more trouble than I might be worth. As you can see, I've got a little color television set here displaying a picture of the kitchen refrigerator. And that picture is coming in by way of a wireless video sending unit, whose antenna probably ought to be turned more that away, although over such a short distance I doubt it matters too much. And over there I have the sending unit. Both of these are X10 branded video sender and receiver units along with a tiny X10 color television camera that you can see sitting over there. What I have in mind for these is nothing less than completely devious. Now there are very few people out there that probably know what I'm up to or at least have a very strong inkling of what I'm up to. And if that is you, I would appreciate it if you would not spill the beans, though I certainly can't stop you from doing so. For those of you who don't know, I'd like to run a little unofficial, just for fun contest here. No prizes or anything like that other than the self-recognition of doing a good job to see if you can figure out what it is I might have in mind for these. Now these things were not exactly what you would call hugely cheap. I really expected they'd be giving them away at the bottom of cereal boxes in this high technology day and age. So I got one set of them from a friendly seller in China for about $28 shipped and this other set complete with the camera for about the same basic kind of money. I'll talk briefly about the ones that came from China because these are very interesting. They look pretty well made. They have metal cases and things like that. This one, the receiver module, is going to require a little bit of repair, as I'm sure you can see. I hope that the antenna has not actually been broken off the circuit board by the damage that is evident here in the video. But if it has, I would imagine it can certainly be fixed. It came with two user's manuals. This one, which is written completely in Chinese. And I found something interesting in this manual. It's always struck me as interesting how, in a language that uses different glyphs from our own, that sometimes they switch back to traditional Latin-style letters. As you can see here in the examples where the Chinese glyphs break off and the word transmitter is written along with the word receiver in our more traditional characters. Of course, what's a traditional character depends greatly upon where you live, too. No matter, this manual is written completely in Chinese, and I don't happen to speak Chinese or even pretend to speak Chinese, so it doesn't do a whole lot of good for me. This manual, which uh, isn't quite as pretty to look at, is written in someone's idea of English. Not to make fun of anyone in particular, but the writing in this manual is certainly hilarious. And if you'd like to read it, you may be able to pause the video here and actually start to do so. There are definitely some hilarious usages of the English language in here. I'll try and get the second page so you can read it. Again, just pause the video. There was a bit of a surprise that came with the Chinese-made video sender and receiver units, and that was the box they came in. Now this got partially damaged during shipping, so it's a little bit banged up. Check this out. Does that look familiar to you? That's a pretty decent knockoff of the uh, Radio Shack packaging style and of course their logo down at the bottom. The sellers or manufacturers that sent this thing to me even went so far as to put a catalog number for this item at the bottom that matches the Radio Shack house style for catalog numbers. I have no idea if that's actually a valid Radio Shack catalog number for any kind of product or not, though I do intend to look it up later. And they also did a much better job with their use of the English language and proper grammar on the box. It looks pretty convincing for the most part, were it not for the BADA logo here that says NEW. And of course this up here, this little starburst that says CAREFUL! DEFEND COUNTERFEIT! I don't think that's quite the meaning they had in mind. The illusion is continued here on the sides with the typeface and the Radio Shack logo. And again, the only thing that really gives it away is the fact that it says Ba Da Communication Equipment Company at the bottom. There's nothing printed on the back. 
And aside from the box, this thing really doesn't try to pass itself off as being a Radio Shack product when it isn't. I just opened up the outer packaging and I was like, wait a minute. There's no way in the world they actually sent me a Radio Shack product. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Now it's time for the actual test, which if anything might give it away, this might. Again, I must say, don't run electronic devices on your bed. Don't do like I do, because you risk having a bed fire if anything goes wrong, and you really don't want that. What I've got set up here is just kind of a test configuration using an old RCA camcorder and feeding its composite video output into this video sender. Now, to go and take the receiver and put it at the other end and see how well this whole business works. And here's the other end of the test on the receiving end, down here in the good old fortress of amplitude with the receiver there, which in addition to relaying video, also happens to relay sound. That's really not too bad of a picture. It's got some little blips and interference in it from time to time. But overall it's not too bad. And this is just a quick demonstration of the sound transfer capability of these things.